Wob wob, this is my intro. Wob wob. What's good, YouTube? Easy now. One very, very seven eight. Get snow here today to talk about Survivor Series. Everything that happens. So there may be some spoilers. Let's talk about the results. Firstly, the pre-show had Cesaro and Jack Swagger fighting. Okay, fight. Nothing special. Fandango did return, and he did return as a more aggressive heel type character as I predicted and also Bad News Barrett returned which I am excited about because Bad News Barrett is one of my favourite wrestlers one of the most underrated wrestlers in my opinion but his crowd reaction wasn't that great so I'm a little bit worried that his character has fell off a little bit so Survivor Series starts with Vince introing and talking about it's a Survivor Series you will never forget and as soon as he said that I knew Sting was returning well not returning, appearing I should say um, and then there was also an, an extra clause in the contract that's seen as the only person who can bring back the authority if they win, which led me to believe that they were going to win. And then down the line in the future, we will see Cena turn heel and bring the authority back and also, you know, just become part of them. That's what I hope to see anyway. So the first match was the tag titles match and this was literally the best match of the night. My favourite match of the night. Four way. Uh, Mizdow and Miz versus Goldust and Stardust versus Las Matadoras versus the Usos. Now everyone involved was top notch. Everyone involved had all their moves and choreography down to a T. It was absolutely badass. And there's a good variation on who was in the ring and the, the, the tagging between each team was very smooth and it kept the match going. Stardust and Goldust just made great heels. They were absolutely excellent. Um, Las Matadoras and Golden Stardust had a massive move at the end which I can only de describe as the quad pile driver bomb German suplex type thing where Stardust had a Las Matadoras on top of him who had Goldust on top of him who had the other Las Matadoras on top of him. So it was absolutely badass and that move really sealed how epic this fight was. But the, the, the thing of the match was Miz and Mizdow with the boos and yes and the crowd reaction to Mizdow. It was absolutely amazing. Mizdow is the hottest thing in WWE at the moment and he deserves to be because he was incredibly put down with all them stupid characters he had to play week in week out. Um, and then obviously Miz and Mizdow won the titles with Mizdow pinning the person and getting a massive reaction. So that is epic. Can't wait to see what they do with that. And that is what I predicted. The 4 on 4 Divas match was surprisingly okay. It wasn't as bad and as dull as I thought it was going to be. Um, Emma was the only person who was very, very clumsy with her fighting. I don't know whether that's just her character or she's just a bad wrestler, but it was pretty crap. Um, Paige was great as always, but she was just screaming way too much. The match was kind of slow paced even though it was okay. Um, Natalia definitely deserves to be the champion. She's a great wrestler and I believe it's just her ties with her family that hold her back. Um, the 4-0 elimination I wasn't expecting at all but it was a pretty good pretty good match. Next we had Ambrose and Wyatt. The, the crowd reaction to both these wrestlers was amazing. Um, there's a great back and forth. It was a believable rivalry, a believable hatred. It was aggressive, it was intense. Bray looked dominant as usual, but you know, Dean Ambrose of his scrappy comebacks made the fight more intense. Um, I love Dean Ambrose taking the mick out of him with the spider in the corner. But Ambrose was very, very impressive. But one key moment for me was Bray's clothesline where he just took Ambrose's head off. Jesus Christ, it was amazing. The crying and mic work during the match was something I've rarely ever seen before. It was absolutely epic. And then, as I said, it was going to be a DQ. Um, to carry it on to TLC and they did set up TLC with Ambrose smacking him with a chair and then pulling out tables and chairs and ladders and throwing them all over the top of him so TLC is going to be absolutely badass I can't wait for that next was Adam Rose and the Bunny versus Slater Gator getting boring with this Adam Rose thing it's they just need to stop it or move him on or at least reveal who the Bunny is because it's just getting repetitive and boring uh, Heath Slater I don't Really rate as a wrestler, but I definitely like him more than he was in 3MB. And Titus O'Neil should definitely be in a title run. Very, very, very underrated. Next, we had the Divas title match. And Bree and AJ Lee kissed, which was incredibly sexy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, I've heard rumours that AJ Lee was going to be leaving after Survivor Series. And if that's true, if she is leaving, this last match was a massive slap in the face to her because... She is by far one of the greatest divas to ever step foot in the ring. One of the most consistent, um, on par, legendary with Trish Stratus and Lita. Um, it's a real shame that if she is leaving, this was what they left her with. So basically the match starts, 
Brie gets up on the ring with the Divas title, kisses AJ Lee. AJ Lee gets knocked out by Nikki and then put in the rack and Nikki pins and wins. Um, so she is leaving. That's a massive slap in the face and very, very disrespectful to one of the greatest Divas of all time. Was Brie in on it all the time though? That is the question because the way she was smiling and cheering and congratulating Nikki, it may seem like they've worked their twin magic. Next, we had the main event match. So... It was very, very intense and no one knew what was going to happen. I couldn't predict what was going to happen with this match. And I further couldn't predict that straight away when the match started, Mark Henry was knocked out by Big Show and pinned. I couldn't believe it. It was a risky opening that WWE paid off, but it added to the intensity of the match and it paid off. The crowd reaction was amazing. Um, Ryback got a weird reception. When he came in, the Feed Me More chants were incredible. But when he got tagged into the match, there was there was barely any reaction. Like, it was dead. It was absolutely dead in there. It picked up a little bit when he carried on fighting. But it was a very underwhelming reaction to Ryback, in my opinion. But the big shot for me was that Ryback was eliminated so early. I expected him to be, you know, the beast that takes everyone out. That, you know, they put him on they put him on push. They push him up and, and show how good he can be. And the reactions would have been epic. I mean, considering the reactions he has been getting the past couple of weeks, I expected him to be in the match. But he was eliminated as well, which was another big shock and another twist. And, and like, what the hell is going to happen? You couldn't really determine what was going to happen because of these things that were people who were getting eliminated. So, next we had um, Rusev that I'm going to talk about. Rusev. Good as always, great wrestler, but again, he couldn't be pinned or DQ'd or submitted um, because that wouldn't be right to his character who's unbeaten in the ring in terms of being pinned or submitted. So the count out was the logical way to keep him from being pinned and they handled it quite well. It was a pretty, pretty cool way to get him out of the match. Um, Eric Rowan is amazing. So, so looking forward to what they do with him in the future. They are really, really developing his character. His spin kick was incredible. I wasn't expecting it from him at all. Um, he's just dominant and it just looks pretty damn beast at what he's going to become. Rowan versus Harper was excellent and is going to be excellent because they're obviously building it up to a rivalry for the Intercontinental Championship between them. And... Ziggler. Ziggler's just incredible. One of the best wrestlers to ever be in the ring. One of the greatest sellers in the business and has ever been in the business. And he done well again in this to prove that that like minute in, minute out during the whole match he was on top. He was impeccable. And he definitely deserves to be pushed in the way he's being pushed now. Because he actually won the match for Team Cena when it was him versus three people. Now there was a little bit of help there and we'll get into that in a second. But firstly, the big show turn on Cena was a was a big what the fuck moment. I never expected it. If anyone was to turn heel and turn against him, I was expecting it to be Ziggler. Because that would have been the most on you know, you wouldn't think of it for Ziggler to turn. So Big Show turning was 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 quite good. It added to the match again. Um, I don't know where they're going to go with him and Mark Henry because apparently they were going to have a double retirement match, but if they're both in the authority, I just don't I don't understand how they're going to do that. So Ziggler's comeback and winning made the match just even more epic. And Triple H and Stephanie were really, really good at ringside. They were really, really intense, like showing fear. They were really good acting and it was pretty cool. And then Triple H started pulling everyone out of the ring, refs and stuff, and beating them up and trying to make it so that Seth Rollins definitely wins. And he pulls Seth Rollins onto um, Ziggler and he calls down that corrupt ref dude. And he counts one, two, and then Sting's music hits. And it was epic. Sting comes down. The face off of Triple H. The face to face walking around each other. Just having the crowd screaming this is awesome. Not not doing anything. Not fighting. They're just basically looking at each other. Sting done well. Um, there was no. I mean I know he's a professional wrestler and a veteran. But there was no show of nerves whatsoever. He was Sting. And it's exciting to see him in a WWE ring. And I can't wait to see where they're going to go with it. Hopefully they take Triple H and Sting. And have them fight at something like Royal Rumble. And then maybe Undertaker appears and challenges um, Sting to one last fight, a retirement fight, double retirement fight. So that was absolutely epic. Sting um, pulls Rollins, I mean Ziggler on top of Rollins and he gets counted and they win. Team Cena win and authority are out of power. I can't wait for Raw tonight and what's going to happen. It's going to be absolutely badass. So let me know what you thought of Survivor Series if you watched it, if you didn't watch it. 
and you've watched this I apologize for spoiling everything but you know that's your own fault for watching here <laughs> so yeah let me know what you think your match of the night was and who you were very impressed with during the pay-per-view but that's me for today subscribe if you haven't already leave some comments feedback likes and I'll see you in the next video peace